The Mac Mini M1 has been out for a few months now, as well as the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro M1. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how those machines have held up. Let's get into it. How's it going? Hashtag AquaFam. It has been Aqua. If y'all followed the whole Mac Mini M1 saga, linked below, I ended up returning the 8GB version for a 16GB version because I just needed a little more RAM to do my video editing, and I had a lot of RAM issues with the 8GB version. If you followed my videos, that 8GB version was 100% cursed and vexed by an actual demon. But the 16GB version, long story short, has been working out super well for me, and I've been incredibly impressed with the performance overall. The 16 gigabyte version just kind of blazes through almost anything I throw at the machine. Even a pizza, it ate an entire pizza. It was crazy. I did a poll recently where 711 of y'all weighed in on your experiences with the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air M1, and the Mac Mini M1. 48% of y'all said no issues at all, it's perfect. That's amazing to hear. 38% of y'all said a few issues here and there, but it's awesome. That's kind of been what my experience has been like. Like, it's been awesome, but it's not 100% perfect. I mean, it is a first generation machine. And then 5% of y'all said so many issues, but it's still worth it. And then 9% of y'all said it sucks. I returned it. I'm waiting for M1X. So first of all, I'll go into a few of the issues that I have been having with my Mac Mini M1, the 16 gigabyte model. They've been really minor issues. There haven't been almost any major issues with the processor speeds or crashing or monitor issues or Bluetooth, especially since Big Sur updated to 11.2.2, the most recent version. So Bluetooth issues are almost non-existent for me and I am using third-party products. I'm using a third-party keyboard. This one has been really fun to work with. This is the Keymove Snowfox 61. This is my first mechanical keyboard like since the late 90s or something. This is a Bluetooth keyboard. It's also a wired USB-C keyboard. It's fully mechanical, fully hot swappable. You can get the switches out and stuff. So I've been teaching myself about mechanical keyboards a lot with this keyboard. And this was sent to me by a company called Banggood. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. I highly recommend this keyboard. I switched out a few keycaps and stuff. I'll probably be doing a whole other video about this keyboard because it's been a lot of fun. But anyway, it's been working with my Mac mini M1 pretty well for the most part. There's been a few times just the rare occasions where it has dropped out a little bit but nothing crazy. I'm also using my Magic Trackpad 2 which has worked flawlessly basically on my Mac Mini so far. Almost no dropouts or anything weird. One of the other major issues I was having with the Mac Mini M1 was monitor issues where I witnessed, especially with LG monitors, the UK850-W model. That monitor for some reason was having these washed out colors and also once in a while when I would switch from HDMI back to that monitor, you know, if I'm playing like Switch for a little while, I go back to USB-C on the Mac Mini M1. Sometimes the dimensions would be all wonky, like it would zoom in and my cursor would be like way off the screen. But that hasn't happened at all with the Dell UltraSharp monitor that has become my main monitor. It's an awesome 27 inch 4K monitor, link in the description for that. I highly recommend this Dell UltraSharp monitor because it has a really nice, just kind of minimal design on the front and it has a ton of USB ports and it acts basically like a USB hub for my Mac mini M1, which does not have a lot of USB ports. And then the other even bigger issue I was having specifically with the eight gigabyte model of the Mac Mini M1 was the Final Cut Pro like apocalypse that was happening. All of y'all that said I needed 16 gigabytes, y'all were 100% correct. And Apple finally released Final Cut Pro 10.5.2, which maybe has improved some of that stability that I wasn't seeing in 10.5.1, specifically with RAM leaks and RAM bottlenecking and all this weird stuff that was happening that would crash my entire machine. I haven't witnessed that at all with Final Cut Pro, the most recent version on the 16 gigabyte Mac mini. And y'all, I am really, really excited and having an awesome time with this mini so far. <clears throat> My throat's a little itchy, just, excuse me, just for one second. Mmm, that's delicious. 
So on that poll, y'all left some awesome comments of your experience using the Mac Mini M1, as well as the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air M1. Kevin6y8 said, I have had my Mac Mini for just over a month now. All the issues I have, I had to blame on myself being a first time Mac owner. Shout out to you, Kevin, for trying out a new Mac, especially with this first generation processor. I have the base M1 Mac Mini, eight gigabyte, 256, running Big Sur 11.2.2. I have the Satechi Slim X1 keyboard and a Kensington Pro Fit Ergo vertical track ball. That's a mouthful. My Mac mini is connected to either my Vizio TV or my LG 27UD58 monitor, depending on work or casual use. I love it. Good to hear that from you, Kevin. Chinami says, for real though, your videos sold me on the mini. Haven't heard of Apple sponsorships, but they be making sales thanks to you. Apple, if you're watching this, please sponsor me, BB. We can make beautiful, beautiful content together. AV says mine is manufactured 2021. No Bluetooth or Wi-Fi issues. It's awesome and never regret. Awesome to hear. Caleb Fry 00 says it's great when I'm not forced to work in Rosetta. I can't wait until everything is able to format to the Apple Silicon. Rosetta makes it run like an old Intel processor. Caleb, I can relate to some of that specifically when I work with Ableton Live, which is my DAW, my music creation software. Ableton Live has not been optimized yet for the M1 processor, but comparing it to how smooth and stuff it already was on my previous computer, which was the 2019 MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. It works basically the same as that. I don't notice a huge difference, even with the 16 gigabytes of RAM on this Mac mini M1. It runs fine, it gets the job done, and I really don't have a lot of complaints, but I am looking forward to Ableton Live being updated and optimized for M1. And I have been talking to some secret peeps over at Ableton, shout out Ableton. They've been telling me that it's under production production and it's going to be coming in a little bit, but they didn't give me a specific date. So if there's anyone else out there watching that uses Ableton Live, the M1 update is coming. Also Ableton Live 11 dropped really recently, and I'm really excited to try that out on the M1 as well. Evno says, I've honestly had zero issues with the Mini or Air. I've edited all my videos with either one the past couple of months. I even was able to add the Mini to my triple monitor setup thanks to a DisplayPort adapter, very happy so far. I mean, that's pretty awesome that the Mini is capable of handling all of those monitors. I tried a two monitor setup with one iPad Pro as well using Sidecar wirelessly as a monitor. And that setup was really cool, but for me, just one monitor works totally fine. The Dell UltraSharp has been really awesome. Magnetic Obsession, I love that username. I have a Mac Mini and MacBook Pro M1. Both are running amazingly well. The battery life on the MacBook Pro is out of this world. It is so good. The fans haven't turned on yet either. M1 has brought the Apple magic back to their computers. I couldn't agree more. Before I got my Mac Mini M1, even the eight gigabyte version that was all vexed out and all hexed out, even with the issues that I was having with that one, I was like, okay, the magic is back with Mac. Apple, y'all need to start paying me for all these rhymes. But seriously, on the Mac Mini M1, I haven't heard the fan go off once, like not a single time, even when I have Final Cut Pro open, and then I have Ableton Live open, rendering stuff out, and then I have Safari with several tabs. Anything that I've done and thrown at the Mac Mini has gone super buttery smooth. There's been no fan noise, and that's one of the main things I love about the Mac Mini versus my older MacBook Pro from 2019. The Intel processor is nice and fast, but that MacBook Pro, the fan comes on, like you just blink, and then the fan comes on at full blast, and I'm like, what is causing that I'm not, I don't even have anything open. Two fly guys say, I have an M1 Mac mini, eight gigabyte. I edit 10 minute long 4K wedding films as my full-time job, 10 bit 422 A7S three footage. And it's been an absolute beast so far. That's really cool to hear. After replacing the mouse and keyboard to Bluetooth over USB, it's been a joy to use fastest Final Cut editing machine on the market for the price. Some people like Max Tech have been comparing the Mac mini M1 to a $15,000 Mac Pro setup or something. And the mini is actually fast faster than your $15,000 computer, which is bonkers to me. And for me, the Mac Mini M1 has been the best Mac I have ever used. It's not perfect, it's not flawless. However, it's just so fast and it's just so buttery that it makes me wanna use it more. And it's my main machine now in my studio, even over the iPad Pro, even over my MacBook Pro, my iPhone, my Mac Mini M1 is the number one Apple device that I have been using recently. Sebastian Schmidt says, 
Cura Ultimaker, a slicing software for 3D printing, crashes during slicing the print data. Cura uses OpenGL libraries. That does not work with the M1 slash Big Sur. And that's one of the issues with M1 that I still experience as well with certain software, which isn't optimized for M1 or just hasn't been updated in a while. Certain stuff just won't open at all. There's a webcam that I got from Logitech for a little while, the Logitech Stream Cam. That comes with a software called Logic Capture. That software did not even open on the M1. And another piece of software that doesn't work with M1 yet is the software that goes with this keyboard. So when I wanna customize this keyboard, I have to go back to my 2019 MacBook Pro with Intel processor because the software doesn't allow me to edit this on my Mac Mini M1. So there are a lot of companies that are still playing catch up with the M1, getting it optimized for the new chip. So like a lot of people in the comments have told me, yes, we are all basically beta testers for the first generation M1. Marcos says, I got the MacBook Pro. I love 3D performance on the M1. My bus simulator project made with Unity runs on Ultra in full HD at 6 to 8 FPS on Intel GPUs, totally unplayable. On the same settings, running under Rosetta, got 50 to 60 frames per second on the M1. That is a dramatic update. Poison Man says M1 16 gigabytes. It really sucks. <laughs> I'm full digital paint artist. I have no idea why it lags for tuning single layer color slash level when I open out to 100 layer working files in Photoshop ARM version. My iMac 2011 i7 27 inch goes very smooth with the same working file. That's really interesting that the 2011 iMac does better than the 2021 Mac mini M1. So what's up with that? The version of Photoshop that's available for M1, it is a beta and I've been running that on my machine. It's been working really well, although I'm not doing, you know, 100 layer files, but for making my thumbnails for my YouTube videos and stuff, Photoshop works extremely well on M1 for me. And finally, Jay VFX says, I have Bluetooth issues, wireless mouse is not working. And Jay is using the Logitech M510 wireless mouse. And I have heard a lot of people in the comments talk about your third party mice and keyboards, specifically from Logitech for some reason, there's a lot of problems with Bluetooth. I made a whole video about this keyboard, the Logitech K380, which is an amazing Bluetooth keyboard. Maybe sometimes once in a while, the keys will be like, I'll type something and then you know, it, it'll be a little bit slow on the screen for it to kind of catch up. You know, I'll just turn it off, turn it back on, and then it basically feels like it's normal again. But again, I think it's just M1 being so new and all these peripherals are just playing catch up. So to sum it all up, I am such a huge fan of the Mac mini M1 and I'm really excited to see what Apple does next when it comes to their M1X. So the question of the day is, how has your experience been with your M1 machine, your Mac mini, your MacBook Pro, MacBook Air? Let me know in the comments what you have experienced so far. Have you experienced any weird issues or is everything working really well? Y'all know what to do with that like button down there if you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me, I will see you in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching and being part of the hashtag AquaFam, and I will see you in the next video.